Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, crypto nerds of all ages, today we've got something special for you. We've got Gen Q here from Metapoly. We're going to talk about DeFi. We're going to talk about the metaverse. We're going to talk about the game Monopoly and how those things come together. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Hey guys, what's up? It's Lauren Wixom here. And like Monty said earlier, we are here with Jen Q from Metapoly. Jen Q, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Thanks for inviting. Uh, of course. Good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So why don't you just go ahead and give us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. How did, uh, how did Metapoly come to be? How did, how did you end up here? Okay. Uh, for me, I'm originally, I'm from Malaysia, but I, I'm based in Singapore. So I wasn't in, in the tech, the web trees space before this uh i'm in the software space i used to be in salesforce uh, i used to be in bike dance i used to be in zoom yeah uh, but i'm always a retail investor so one of our co-founder he's always in been in this space for the past five years so i'm sort of influenced by him so and i that's one day i mean last year i decided to quit my corporate job and you know just give him a hand and you took the leap the time, i love it yeah, took the leap uh because I think I'm tired of corporate, so I just want to take a break. And he so so happened that's this new project that we casually talk about during our drinking and coffee session. So and <laughs> we kick started when I stopped my job. <laughs> that's how it started. Wow. Okay. So very humble beginnings. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the best ideas start that way. There's no doubt about it. Um, as as you were having that 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 initial conversation. Did the name come up right away? Uh, I the name itself is a, is a combination, right, of of metaverse and monopoly. Yes, exactly. You're right. Um, like like I say, right during the drinking drinking session and coffee session, we we keep talking about different projects, and we do see that there's a explosive growth in metaverse. Um, and ever since Meta announced it, it's even even crazy. You can see more and more projects are launching in the metaverse, especially mm -hmm. uh, projects with metaverse land. And we would, and because my co-founder are doing another DeFi platform, he has completed a project, and that's why he was thinking that should we create another new project that relate DeFi project that relate to Metaverse? Then what should we name it? So Metaverse, and then and then we suddenly thought of you know we when we were kids we played the Monopoly game, the board games yeah. where you have banks, you you can buy buildings, rent buildings. Right. So we were thinking, why don't we just call it Metapoly? So it sounds fun. So that's how, and it's a DeFi platform. So Metaverse combined with Monopoly, Metapoly. Got it. Okay. So kind it's of the gamification. Yes. On. Yeah. So I want to know, kind of random, but you said you were drinking coffee and then other drinks. What are the other drinks? Ha, 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 ha. You know, <laughs> creativity come when you are a bit tipsy. Yes. <laughs> that's how we started. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. All yeah. right. So, so th things got a little loose and uh, and the creativity <laughs> flowed. I, I love it. Um, and let's let's talk about the metaverse because the whole metaverse seems like it's just a creative explosion right now. Oh, um, yeah. and, and, and we have seen explosive growth in the in the in the field, really. And I'm wondering that exponential growth, it doesn't seem sustainable for me long term. And traditional real estate has been a hedge against, you know, crazy markets changing. You know, they, they've they always said, you know, buy, buy land. They're, they're not making more of it unless you're in like Hawaii or someplace. Right. Um, <laughs> but but generally speaking, land has been a safe bet. Do you see metaverse properties moving in that direction eventually? Will this volatility subside? Okay, so in my opinion, uh, we have to look it in the long run. So if you, have, if you have seen a lot of big banks and even big research company come up reports to see in long term, this space will grow, right? But mm -hmm. at this moment, in my opinion, we are still in a very immature stage. And what do I mean by that? Um, in terms of metaverse from infrastructure perspective, you know, the hardware, the software, uh, we are still in the early stage. A perfect example that... Uh, there are certain projects, I just don't, don't want to name it, but big projects, you cannot have more than 100 people in the map. It, it will just hang. <laughs> you cannot get right. it. From infrastructure issue. And of course, from gaming experience, uh, when we talk about game experience, we talk about do we have enough creators within the game ecosystems? Do, do we have enough job opportunity that in the within the game ecosystem? But when right. all this is in place, my answer is yes. Definitely, 
uh, the real estate in virtual will grow. And definitely when all these are ready, there will be a potential to be a H, uh, uh, you know, from virtual uh, world compared to the uh, real life. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Norman, why don't you take this next one? Yeah. All right. Well, how does volatility impact your business? So for us, we are a metaverse bank. So basically what we do is we do borrow and lending for metaverse land. So your NFT assets, um, you also can sell us your land if you want to and, and take our token and get some interest. Um, but when we hold all these uh, metaverse assets, where the volatility definitely impact us. So we need to be very careful on managing, you know, how much we need to borrow, uh, we can borrow to, to the users and how much money we need to manage. Uh, so the liquidity it's very important for us. You know, you just like just like a normal bank, you cannot run a bank without the liquidity. So we, right. um, one of the things that we do to make sure that we have enough liquidity is the health ratios of those NFT project. We need to actually uh, judge which are the blue chips that is safer, so we can give a higher uh, borrow rate. What those are like high risk, then we will give a, a lower because at the end of the day. The assets on our hand is a bad debt, right? We need to make sure that it can be liquidated as well. So these yeah. are the things that we actually need to be very careful on it. Uh, especially, mm -hmm. like I said, we are still at the early stage. Uh, there will be a consolidation, so we are not sure. So, um, and in in uh, in the next six months, once our fund uh, is ready and even uh, grow into a certain stage, we we need to have actually even a fund manager to manage the money. You know, help us to do the yield farming and other other investments. The protocol we have revenue, but we need to use the money to generate more incomes. So that's why, in long run, we have leasing, we have mortgages, uh, we also have other 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 projects that will be lining up for the Metaverse Bank. Got it. Let me ask you just a few more questions, Lauren, and then I'll I'll let you get to the next main one here. But the the leasing, the mortgage process, um, that portion of it fascinates me. But the the valuation does worry me a little bit. Like in a traditional mortgage, you have an appraiser that goes out and it's a very inefficient system. Um, yes. It's really just, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder and they they arbitrarily compare you to some other properties and uh, you can't really dispute the process very much. How yes. does that appraisal process work in the metaverse? Can you walk our viewers through that? And if I wanted to, 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 to you know, borrow against some, some metaverse property, how do I know what the value is there? That, that's a great question. Uh, just, just, just to let you know, right, at this moment, we do not, across different Metaverse projects, they have different metrics, right? And also, there isn't any, I would say, standardized way to actually evaluate the assets at this moment. So at this moment, most of the pro projects, uh, when they do borrow and lending, we use the floor price as an average. Uh, and it depends on, there are some calculation, like the total uh, weekly average. Some, mm -hmm. That will be the starting point. But uh, we are in discussion with few so-called analytics projects like Metametrics, Will Analytica and all that and other different borrow planning projects to see how we can come up with, uh, I would say, you can't say it's a standardized because different meta metaverse has different metrics, but we come up with some frameworks that we can actually use to evaluate land projects. And there are some interesting projects that are trying to do that. So we will try to work with them uh, and hopefully we can create, uh, I would say, not a final standard, but at least some framework for us to actually evaluate. But at this moment, there isn't any. So floor price will be the, the temporary solution. Yeah, got it. Okay. And okay. revenue wise, is it um, is, are there origination fees when you borrow against this? Is that how you make your revenue to, you know, to lend out to other folks or to, you know, for, for other projects, DeFi projects, that sort of thing? Yeah, so the owner can deposit their land so they can borrow the money. Then we have people who deposit the money that can borrow to the user to provide the liquidity. But there's a trading fees involved. We earn from the trading fees. And for, right. of course, if for the mortgage and uh, le uh, leasing as well, we will earn some transaction fees. But on the other part, actually, we will also take in uh, Metaverse tokens. With the Metaverse tokens, they are transaction fee as well. So. And the second phase of our project, because one of the key things we want to create liquidity and use cases for landowners, we will have fractionalized for lands. As you know, there's a lot of land that costs millions of dollars and it's not easy to sell it. Fractionalized yeah. land might be a solution. And we also we have uh, like revenue stream from that part of it as well. Yeah. Will I be able to fractionalize the leasing sort of like a mall? You know, if I if I if I fractionalize it, you know, with uh, you know twenty different stores, will they each have a stall in my metaverse property? That's a good that, question. Like if there is some project with that kind of uh, functionality, definitely. At this moment, we are focusing more on the land itself because uh, now I think yeah. at this moment, metaverse is only land and land. So yeah, 
I think the next phase will be this, you know, and we are looking forward for that because now <laughs> there's a lot of metaverse rich landowners. We met people with yeah. millions of land, but they didn't do anything out of that. But if let's say they build, like you say, more than all that, and mm -hmm. we can analyze it, if there's a solution for it, definitely we'll do it. You know, because that's a market, right? Just like the real world, you have uh, REITs, you know, you invest yeah. in REITs. <laughs> it's, it's a similar concept. <laughs> yeah. It's fascinating how well, how much the 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 transfer is that you know from real world to metaverse. Um, it sounds very similar. Same terminology. That's great. Mm, yes, it is. It is. It's that's why we found a lot of similarities. That's that's why that's why we think that uh, in 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 metaverse uh, when it continue to grow and it's getting more mature, definitely uh, from a DeFi perspective, these are all the opportunities that we have. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's talk about DAOs a little bit. So, why was it important for you to structure Metapoly as a DAO? Oh, uh, as you can see, I, I mean, DAO, it's, uh, it's a, everyone talk about DAO and DAO, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a hot topic lately, definitely. Yes. Hot topic, but <laughs> I, actually, I, I, I realized that in my opinion, there's a lot of projects that just use DAO as a gimmick and they do not know the actual value of DAO. I mean, for us, what we think is you, you need every project need to sustain for long term. The key is the community. Because uh, the community will give you new ideas. They, they will give you suggestions. If you look at those uh, very good protocol, they are, communities are crazy. They can come up with amazing proposals. They are even maybe sometimes even better than the founder. The key is the community. And we were also thinking that without the community, we can't grow in the long term. But so yeah. that's why we want to move. Initially, of course, the project start with the core team are setting the fundamentals. I think that's very important. I remember mm -hmm. there's one podcast that I listened, right? There are projects that, yes, they, they embrace the DAO, but they hand over the project to the DAO when the fundamentals are not right yet. So mm -hmm. end up the project screw up. So I think the key is DAO is important and supported by community and community is a key of success of a project. But before mm -hmm. that, the project need to set the fundamental rights for the DAO to grow. Then when we pass it over fully DAO, then the project can scale itself. Yeah. So a DAO in this sense, when um, you're operating, you know, in the DeFi space, is less like a bank and more like in the US, what we would call a, a credit union, right? Or maybe a, like a savings and loan or something like that, where everybody who who saves their money, or in this case, land, they mm. have shares and they have yeah. your um, your token. Do I pronounce the token? Is it a deed token, or do you actually say D three three D? Yeah, it's deed. Actually, you D. get it. Okay. Right? Yeah, okay. deed. Yes, exactly. And th so, those are, those are your governance tokens, right? Exactly. So that's why they can vote for what are the projects that we take. If if you look at the big picture, right? Uh, when Metapoly takes more land projects and all that, and Meta Metaverse tokens, basically we own a stake in those Metaverse project. Mm -hmm. So when we own a stake of this Metaverse project, we can actually influence the Metaverse project. For example, the Central Land Sandbox, mm -hmm. the RD, right? When you hold more of their land assets. Like, for example, Decentraland, when you hold land assets, you do have voting powers. So the bank has voting powers on, on top of that as well. So the deep token holder can actually vote for some initiatives as well for the DAO uh, that benefits the DAO itself. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you have a plan to turn this uh, fully into a DAO by a certain target date or by a certain yeah. um, you know, TVL covered? What, what, what's your, what are your metrics for that? For us, uh, we, we do not have a very clear metrics, but for us, uh, we give ourselves six months to build the fundamentals. When the fundamental is, is ready, because it's hard to tell because markets keep changing and the people, I, I would say, <laughs> a lot of degens are, are, you know, are yeah. keep changing. Uh, like I said, uh, we, we learn from other projects that when they hand over the DAO too early without the fundamentals, the project will, will, will go, go to a wrong direction. So that's something that we keep in mind and to make sure that it, it will not happen. So our timeline is six months uh, and TVL when at least is 100 million. That, that will be safe, but uh, this this might change, you know, <laughs> because the okay. market is just crazy, man. <laughs> it, it, it is crazy, and that volatility is, is nuts. Every day on CNBC, you see equal parts, you know, people who are advocates for uh, for crypto, for blockchain, for the metaverse, mm -hmm. and people who are, uh, you know, naysayers. You see the, you know, the, the Buffets who say, you know, it's it's rat poison, it's worth nothing. Yeah. Jamie Dimon comes on and, and badmouths yeah. it. Um, what do you say to defend the position that says, you know, this is just all uh, vaporware? You know, it's this. This could just go away in a minute. What do you yeah. say to those people that just say, you know, you're 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 peddling nonsense? Yeah, the naysayers. I, I think every, every, everything. I would say every product, every 
things that have tried to disrupt the industry, people will, in the early stage, especially in the early stage, people will say, yeah. no, you know, don't believe it. It's a scam. Even when I joined, when I quit, quit my high paid six figure jobs in tech space and joined here, yeah. people say, yeah. Yeah. Check you, are you are you are you crazy? Are you joining a scam? I was like, Dude, I, do you guys really read about the white paper? Do you really go into it and you know understand more about the fundamentals before you even say that, or you just read the news and look at the you know? So so we can't argue with all those people. Uh, I think times will tell, and the figures already show you, you know, in long term what are the adoptions, right? So. I, I, uh, there will be a lot of bubble, to be honest. If I see, uh, I, I met a lot of projects and I do see there's a lot of bubble in, in this. But even with the bubble burst, just like dot-com bubble, the tech mm. companies will still strive. So same goes to crypto. So those mm. who understand the fundamentals, those who believe it, we will continue to build, build the right product. That's the key. And this space will definitely still continue to grow. So we, we just ignore the noise of and focus on building the right product, yeah. uh, create values. People will see it. People will slowly follow what do you think the main value of metaverse projects are? I mean, it's the the graphics themselves are really sort of you know kind of blocky still. They're not fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, it's not even to the quality of like a you know some video game stuff. Um, yes. You know, it's like a Second Life. What what do you think the metaverse will morph into? Do you think it's really somewhere where we'll put on the VR headsets and we'll go shopping and find services and watch a movie or a concert? Um, and what's the time frame for that kind of stuff? For me, I think in the next five years, if if Lord said the fundamentals, for example, like I say, infrastructure and hardware can keep up, mm -hmm. and the software can keep up, everyone laptops can just go into any games uh, without lagging <laughs> or even disconnected. Yeah. That if let's say that can happen, it will be very fast. You know, um, I give you a perfect example. I I just met a founder that he has a VR exercise, and people thought that wearing a visa, VR glasses to do exercise is too heavy. Doesn't make sense. No man, I I wear it on it. I do a five minutes hit. And it's the experience is amazing, and I don't even feel that I'm wearing the goggles, to be honest. So, mm. and 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 people are slowly moving uh, into virtual virtual world, and we can yeah. see that in the previous Web two space, people are going into games. People spend twelve hours, fifteen hours into game, and people yeah. think it's a bit and waste of time. But now we have esports, million billions dollars of uh, industry, and mm -hmm. in metaverse, it's the same. People will go into it. They they will spend most of their time in the metaverse. It can be shopping. It can be gaming. It can be just socializing. But on the other mm -hmm. hand, we can also build other economy. So, for example, mm -hmm. we already have virtual architects. In, mm -hmm. in that's a real career. You know, you are not mm -hmm. a real life architect, but you are a virtual world architect. So all this job, if there's more things created, with the economy created within the metaverse, I, I would see that's a, I mean, that's that that will be the trend. And that will be the future. Yeah, it's a matter of time. I, for my, for me, I see at least five to ten years. Uh, yeah. This will pick up of uh, the metaverse growth. Yeah, I didn't even think about the additional you know jobs that are going to get created um, that come yeah. along with the the metaverse like this. So you may have like you know metaverse advertising agencies. You may have yes. uh, you, you just mentioned architects. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe there will be uh, that analytics company will 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 not call themselves an analytics company. They'll call themselves the appraiser company. Um, you'll have, um, you know, title companies, it's, it's verification it's, on know. chain. It's, 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 it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, uh, recently we've seen some projects come on and, you know, spike the price of, of ETH, um, you know, pretty drastically. Yeah. Uh, are, is your project, um, you know, what are your thoughts on, on multi-chain support? Um, you know, Algorand, Solana, some of these other ones, Polygon. Um, is there an opportunity for expansion there? Um, and, and what does the, the future look like? Or is it is it too complicated because, you know, there can only be one metaverse instead of yeah. the multi-metaverse? <laughs> you know, like, like what's, what, what's the thought process there? The short answer is yes, definitely. Because, you know, our key, key, key statement is we want to create liquidity for the metaverse owner, right? So liquidity doesn't just stay with ETH. Uh, we mm -hmm. need to help them to actually cross between different chains. So definitely we want to fork uh, the pro project into different uh, chains. But the, the only question is, is there enough Metaverse projects or is the ecosystem ready for that? Uh, that's mm -hmm. I think this that's the key. Because uh, as you can see, most, I would say 90% of the blue chip Metaverse projects are on ETH. Mm -hmm. And as a bank, like we, you have to do borrow lending. We have to be on ETH. A lot of people ask us, why, why you start with 
Ethereum, but I say because 90% of the metaverse assets are on Ethereum, so we have to start, right? We have to follow yeah. where the money is uh, for, for our project because we focus on metaverse. That's where, but when uh, I, we do see other chains are growing in, in terms of uh, metaverse gaming perspective, um, mm -hmm. and there's more metaverse assets in it as well. So that's what we are looking and evaluating. Hopefully we can fork it to, to other chains uh, early, early, early next year when things are clearer in terms of other mm -hmm. chains, what other blue chip projects that they are, because it's, it's too volatile, we can't simply just take any project. So we need to make sure, make sure that there's enough liquidity, enough, uh, I would say, blue chip projects, then we can actually fork it to other chain yeah, as well. Does the upcoming, you know, long awaited Ethereum upgrade impact a business like yours? Is that something that you're looking forward to, or the community is looking forward to, or is it just business as usual? Business as usual, and actually, it's benef actually is beneficial for us because now uh, people don't want to be on Ethereum and buy and sell all this because of the transaction fees, right? If this upgrade can help to solve that, you know, more and more people will actually embrace it, and 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 it allows some projects to actually even scale because there's a lot of project moving out from Ethereum because of that, right? But mm -hmm. if they if they actually can scale uh, without this transaction fee issue. Maybe, 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 maybe actually you'll see exponential growth uh, mm. in the ETH projects. Yeah. Okay. Um, just, just a, a, just a curiosity thing. Uh, what's the current interest rate on a mortgage against, uh, you know, a, a, a metaverse project? How, how are interest rates um, defined in a, in a DeFi era? So for mortgages and uh, leasing, we are still working out the, the numbers because it's a bit tricky. You know, it's not like the real life. That's so easy. But how we mm -hmm. structure it in a smart contract. So we, we do not have the exact number yet, but for the borrow and lending, we are talking about 30 to 50%. So it depends on project, like I, like I say, the health ratio. So that's a, the, the easier to start. The interest can be just 1% to 5% because there are some calculation behind to, to actually uh, balance uh, our health ratio and also our risk level. So uh, soon we will release it in the document because the numbers we are still working out because we are st need to back test a lot, uh, especially the volatility for past two weeks is kind of yeah. crazy. Uh, we yeah. need to make sure that the, the the interest that we charge and the algorithm for the health ratio, it's correct so that we, we will not be liquidated all the time. Uh, that's Yeah, that's the I, was, I was worried about that. I was going to ask, um, you know, if that was a possibility. It, most countries have some sort of, you know, uh, central bank backing, um, mm. you know, the, their financial system, right? So in the US, the, the Fed funds rate, you know, the bank overnight rate determines a lot of times, you know, what the bank can borrow at. And, um, you know, there's mortgage backed securities and there's there's a lot of like the government interaction there that really determines what the base interest rate is. If the government's charging, you know, the banks two percent, then they're going to charge four percent because they want to make their 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 margin there. Um, does the deed token have any um, input there or how does is there any is there any safety net in in a DeFi space at all? So one of the things other than land, right? So mm -hmm. owner can actually sell their Metaverse LP tokens to us. Like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the pairing with a decent uh, mana token with ETH, your stand with ETH. So when we hold that, we actually hold a transaction volume of that. We actually earn money from that as well. And uh, by holding the deed token, you get reward based on this. So we also realize that rebase token or even this uh, giving a protocol token doesn't make sense in long term because it creates inflation. So in long run, we will launch our own uh, stable coin that we actually will back by all these assets and we reward you in that stable coin instead. So that, and the asset, the stable coin is backed by all the massive assets, which is the land, the to metaverse tokens and some stable coin to, mm -hmm. to actually balance that. Um, so that, you know, we, we, we will not be uh, facing an issue of liquidity. And that's why only blue chip projects and the health ratio uh, during is, uh, I mean, in, at this stage, it's based on floor price and it's 30 to 50%. So the chances for us losing money is low because you, we only borrow you 50% of the floor price. And, and and when we liquidate it, we sell still below the floor price. So there's a market for all these blue chip projects. So we can easily sell it off and uh, get back our money. Yeah. Got it. And as if I was an owner, I guess that would offer me some peace of mind as well, knowing, hey, there's there's I've got quite a bit of buffer in there before I might before I get liquidated and before I exactly. lose out. You have 48 hours to actually buy back if they want to, because sometimes you might not know, right? Who, who know market crashes and the floor price went down more than more than health ratio. Then we have to liquidate them and they, they have an option to buy back if they want to. 
yeah, I think that, that that's also uh, what we offer as well. Yeah. Hmm. All right, good. Um, we are got to wrap it up here. Lauren, do you have a, any, any other last minute questions? Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about your NFTs. Oh, so we, we have we have a bit of gamification. Uh, we have our, we call it the uh, Fraction NFT. So after our official launch, uh, I think after maybe one month of our official launch, we have the Fraction NFT. So by staking it, you get additional transaction fee sharings and all that. So, and we have some uh, 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 paid, uh, the, uh, the IP from some big projects that we want to incorporate in our uh, NFTs, uh, but some Alpha League, but I'll share more oh, details. There's, there's some alpha to be leaked there somewhere. I know <laughs> there's, yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. There's, there's some big projects. Uh, collaboration sounds like. Yeah, basically okay. it's a gamification. So you stake the NFTs in the protocol, you get additional benefit, voting powers and additional uh, transaction fee share uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the platform. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Will you guys be at uh, NYC NFT? I'll be there. Are you? Will you be there? Okay. Yep. Yep. So we're, okay. we, we've we've been thinking about going. Uh, we went uh, to New York City. Uh, what uh, last month? I think we're going to yeah. go again uh, this next month. So uh, excited yep. to be there. It's That's it's exciting. it's one of the biggest events, right? Yes, it is. I mean, we we, we uh, I mean, like, we came to US. We came to Miami, and um, we are we are meeting some investors because we are in our seat round. And since we are here, NFT New York is a huge event. So and I'll, I'll be in New York to meet some investors. So I will just drop by and and move like maybe we can catch up for coffee as well yeah absolutely all right That'd fantastic all right uh, <laughs> is there anything else that we forgot to ask that you think is really important for the audience to know about a, a metaverse DeFi project um you know you know such as yours if somebody is brand new what's the most important thing that they know mm, i think a lot of people are still not sure what is DeFi, so uh i think they, they thought it's a get rich quick scheme no no it's not you know you need to understand it i, I think um try to understand what is the fundamentals and uh long-term investment what what do you mean by long-term investment if you are that type of people maybe divide it's 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 the right place for you for long term you need to do a lot of studies and which are the protocol that benefit you and in long term uh you might get the benefit yeah there's no short term in in DeFi world it's all long term yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's not a get rich quick type of a scheme. Uh, I think you're, you're right. A lot of people have that perception. Um, and so it's it's something that's kind of an uphill battle, I think, that we're going to have to face. Mm. And it, it probably stems from a few real world cases where there were a couple of people who really did hit, you know, metaverse yeah. rich. And it, they just need to realize, okay, well, we're not first. You know, let's let's put a, a strategic investment plan together, and just like any other investment portfolio, do some research. Um, you know, make some decisions, and you know, gauge your own risk, and then talk to to you know somebody else in the industry and, and get some advice and learn. Um, I like it. All right, um, GenQ, thank you so much for joining us, uh, GenQ, everybody from Monopoly uh, org. And uh, go check out the website. Go poke around. They got uh, some cool um, graphics up. I think you've got yeah. uh, uh, some great nice UI. Some, yeah, it's a, it's it's very well put together. I can tell that the, there's a lot of thought process gone there. Um, and maybe we'll see you at uh, NYC NFT. All right. Yes. Sure. Thank you, CryptoNet, for inviting. Thank you. All right, everybody. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll see more. Mm -hmm.